Honestly, I thought this was gonna be more like a snack, but it's a big bowl of food. So we're gonna mix this up thoroughly. Guys, let's do it. Today on the Best Ever Food Review Show, we're going on another fun food adventure, this time with my one trip guy, Ju. Hi everyone, I'm Juk. We are in Hue, in this market known as Chợ Đông Ba. And we are gonna see a massive amount of food. Stick around, cause you're gonna wanna eat it all. Mm -hmm. Catch them all, see them all, let's go. Hue was Vietnam's capital until 1945, and Dong Ba Market is Hue's largest market selling anything and everything, especially food. Would you look at this beautiful stack of pork cakes. It is like a stack of hot cakes. That's a lot of pork cake. For those with adventurous taste buds, this market is a must. It seems like every few steps, you'll find a small vendor with a collection of tiny plastic stools surrounding some pot of boiling deliciousness or a shrine built for the food gods themselves. Looks like a little art display. Like, it's a shrine to the food gods. Today, Jup and I will show you some must-try Central Vietnamese foods unique to this area. Let's get started. This place is completely packed with food. We are running around right now trying to film everything we can because we want to show you all that we can. Literally, everywhere you look, there's a different enclave, a little different pocket with some different food in it. Let's keep looking and see what else we can find. She said I'm beautiful? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> right here, we have lots of bowls of shrimpies. Yeah. Good. All right, moving on. No, hold on. What were you saying about these? So there are a lot of kind of fermented things. Oh, Those I didn't are the see fermented, these. yeah. The purple one? Yeah, the purple one is the uh, fermented small shrimp, tiny shrimp. Oh, dear Lord. The smell so coming off here. Here it's okay, it's like spicy and tangy smell. There's a reason they're keeping that purple one far away from us. That is like where the intense yeah. smell is at. So that is the secret sauce for your bún bò huế. Oh, that's in the bún bò huế? Yeah. And that's what we're gonna be having today? So for that kind of sauce, they catch those tiny shrimp, and yeah. then they mince, and then they add uh, salt, mm. then they, they let it ferment. And it turns? Turn purple. And it turns purple. Will she let me sample one of these? Yeah. Okay. We're gonna sample this purple fermented shrimp paste. It is known for being incredibly pungent, powerful, uh, in fact, overpowering. It's not recommended that you eat it in this way, but we're gonna give it a try anyways. Strong smell so far, and let's try it out. <laughs> oh yeah. Not bad. You're not supposed to eat it alone. It's like eating a tablespoon of salt and being like, oh, it's a little too salty. Full of seafood essence and that shrimp flavor certainly comes through in a big way. This amazingly pungent sauce will be an ingredient in the legendary Bun Bo Hue. But first, we've got some other tasty treats to take down. Our first food of the day, it's called Gum Hen. Gum Hen? Yeah. How about you just say all the names? What is it called? Gum Hen. Good. And now everyone knows how to say it properly including me. We caught these little clams already in Hoi An, but the meal here, the way they're preparing it, is completely different than what we experienced. Let's check it out. Tiny clams are the most important ingredient in today's gom hen. This family recipe starts with some greens, rice, young banana, MSG, cashew oil, chili oil, and a splash of that intense fermented shrimp paste we were just talking about. Peanuts, fried pork skin, and those tiny clams. So the first step is we're gonna mix this beautiful assortment of ingredients right here. This is the most heartbreaking part of any Vietnamese meal because the presentation is always so beautiful. It's like a work of art and I, I hate it every time destroying it. You gotta mix it all up and blend those flavors together. Ready? Oh. Mm, mm. For me, this is the best of Korean cuisine. It is made from those very simple, easy to find and cheap ingredients. This dish was created by the poor people, but it was offered to the king. Yeah, because of its amazing taste. Mmm, it's actually really light uh, with the crunchiness in there. That's what I like is certainly has some salt to it, but overall all the ingredients taste and feel light. There's what inside? <laughs> Are you joking me? You're fired. <laughs> we are still making our way through the market, and this place has everything, including a ton of food. What is this? All kind of the uh, savory cake. She's got these steamed up little like banana leaves, right? Yeah. And inside, they look hot, greasy, and steamy. 
This one we call bánh nấm, made from rice flour ah. and pork. Ah, and also shrimp. Yeah, that one is non-spicy and this one is with a lot of chili. Oh, so which one should we be getting today? Of course, the chili. Yeah, <laughs> that's how we roll when we're in Central Vietnam. It's all about that spice, baby. Central Vietnam has tons of these banana leaf wrapped wonders. This vendor's family makes over 1,000 of these a day. She then carts them from home to the market where we're about to try them now. The first with rice flour, pork, and shrimp and the second chewier version made with tapioca starch with a shrimpy hiding inside. We'll start with the shrimpy. It looks like uh, a piece of amber and we have to drill inside for a mosquito and then we can create Jurassic Park. Oh, it's beautiful in the way people make it. Should we take a big bite of this? Yeah. Hmm. I gotta be honest, not my favorite. That one, I crunch in right away. I feel the entire shrimp is there. I'm crunching the head of a shrimp. It is a sharp, shrimpy taste. What do you like about it? Uh, texture of the cake. Do you really like the texture? Yeah. Next, so over here we have the pork with the shrimp. Let's try that. Mmm. Oh, that, that is where it's at. That tastes like a Campbell's ravioli. Warm, porky, salty inside, and then that kind of noodly pasta outside. It feels like pasta, even though it's made from rice. It feels like a ravioli. What's happening to my mouth right now? Huh? Because it hurts a lot, my mouth. What did you do? Chili. <clears throat> Why do you do this to me? Ah, it's so hot, my lips are burning. Cut. No, cream chili. Spicier than the red one. Yeah? Is she judging me? <laughs> She's judging me. My lips are gonna swell up like uh, a Kardashian over here. Mm. Right up here we have a lady carrying a ton of different banh mi ingredients. Let's see if we can stop her and ask for a sandwich. Uh, Gioi. Uh, hi. Uh, mo I'm not sure exactly how this works. I think she's gonna set up somewhere and make a sandwich for us, but let's keep following along. Xin chào. She's carrying around all this, this huge platter of banh mi and banh mi ingredients. Pate, cone cuts. Friday. Can you ask? I'm, I'm just so curious because some people just have their spot. They stay there all day. Why is she walking around all day? She doesn't have enough money to buy oh. the whole spot. So these people who have a permanent spot like on the sidewalk, they had to pay for that spot? Yeah. Whoa. Okay, I didn't realize how competitive this was. I knew you couldn't just be anyone walking up, putting down your food and selling it, but evidently it's even more than that. Like people are paying for these individual spots to sell food. Well, I don't want to keep you too long. Uh, let's get, I'll get one with cold cut. I'm consistently blown away by the resilience and hardworking nature of Vietnamese people. Without the money to buy a full-time selling spot in the market, this woman is supporting her family by constantly being on the move, carrying loads of ingredients and stopping down briefly when someone places an order for a banh mi. The meat is nice, the mayonnaise adds some much needed kind of moisture to it. The most interesting thing for me was to learn about this woman and her story. With that being said, let's keep going and see what else we can find. Hi, do you need any help selling food? <laughs> uh, Jup, what is this? This is the mixed vermicelli noodles. Glass noodle. It's glass, glass noodle. Noodles. Ah, it's a glass noodle. It's made from mung bean. These M mung bean. are made from mung bean. Yeah. You can make noodles from a bean? Just kidding, I knew that. Of course I knew that. Pork sausage with uh, a lot of uh, pork skin inside. Looks like a little art display. Like, uh, yeah. it's a shrine to the food gods. Yeah. Could you ask her how long she's been selling this? She buys this for how long? 15 years. Fifteen years. Wow. And so fifteen years, she prepares this at home, she brings it here, and then she sells it uh, until it sells out. Should we order some? Yeah. All right, let's try it. Today, our mixed glass noodle starts with some fresh herbs, banana blossom, glass noodles made from mung bean, assorted sausages, and woodier mushroom, peanuts, rice cracker, and a bit of chili sauce. Honestly, I thought this was gonna be more like a snack, but it's a big bowl of food. So we're gonna mix this up thoroughly. Guys, let's do it. Mmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mmm. It's delicious. Very delicate, light flavors. Mm. Nothing heavy. Just a little bit of salt. Certainly not bland. It's like the type of food you can eat it and you can keep moving through the market after that and go shopping for plenty of fireworks. Is that fireworks? What are they? No, Incense? They yeah. And you can go. Oh, for your ancestors? And you can. Coach, should I still. Is it okay to talk about that? 
And you can go shopping for plenty of incense. Let's move on. My favorite part is definitely this wood ear mushroom. And what's awesome about the wood ear mushroom is they, they slice it all thin like this. Where it's a little mm -hmm. greasy and then a little like chewy. A great chewiness to it. I love it. Bún bò huế. Oh, they have bún bò huế here. Mm. Everybody in Saigon knows bún bò. It's very famous, but it actually comes from the city of Huế. Right, and that's why we're gonna try it here in the city. People have asked me to review this food before, but I said I couldn't do it until I came to its home, its origin. Finally, the moment has arrived. Trying out bún bò in the city of its creation, starting with rice noodles, some greens, and beef blanched in a savory pork bone broth, then more broth and more broth, and some fresh herbs on top. And there's also a blood cake in there too. All right, Jupe, let's eat Boon Ba Hue. Boon Ba Let's eat Boon. <laughs> it's cute. So earlier, right before this, we saw that delicious shrimp paste, and they put that in here too with blood cake. The shape of it, it looks like they put it into an ice cube tray. <laughs> to let it solidify. <laughs> I want to try some of the blood cake first. Inside the blood cake, there are all these tiny little holes. Do you have any idea uh, why those are there? I don't. Don't think? Just chew? Let's go for it. Mm. Mm. That's a good blood cake. It needs a little bit of noodle in there too. Mmm. Blood cake is something, when I first came to Asia, I was a little bit scared of. Uh, it's intimidating. As a Westerner, we don't eat a lot of blood. Although, my dad used to make blood sausage, so I guess that's a lie. But the texture is my favorite part of it. It just kind of crumbles apart in a really fun way. Should we get some of these noodles? Yeah. Let's go mm. for it. You take up a lot of space on the table. Wow, very good. A little spicy. The shrimp paste, I can tell it's in there, but it's not strong at all. Mm, mm, mm. Right? It's just adding a, a little bit of flavor and probably some of that saltiness is coming from that shrimp. Jupe, thank you so much for joining me today. This was a ton of fun for me. There's so much food here to try. Mm. And for you guys, if you're looking for the best foodie experience that Vietnam has to offer, let me tell you about a company called One Trip. One Trip is putting on food tours in Da Nang, Hoi An, right next door to Hue, and also in Saigon. They bring you all over the city. You can try tons of different foods, learn about the food, learn about the city, ride on the back of the bike, really get the full authentic Vietnam experience like none other. Links for that are in the description down below. I will see you next week. Do not forget to sub this video if you liked it and even if you didn't like it and even if you hated it. Still sub, throw me one of these, not one of these. Again, I'll see you next week. A peace.